Hi YouTubers, Jim from Ohio here, and this is a video series I've been looking forward to putting online for quite some time. Uh, as you all know, those that have been following me anyway, I like doing a lot of homesteading videos and solar power videos, and during the winter time in Ohio, it's hard to get outside and do anything like that, so I move my work inside into my garage, and this is something that I've been working on for quite a while. Now, I have uh, put out some other videos with uh, uh, concerning solar ovens, and uh, most of those have been with an oven that I purchased online. However, uh, this is a new oven that I recently built in my garage, and uh, it's a uh, solar evacuated tube oven, and I've seen several of these online for sale commercially, but all of them have been really, really expensive, so I wanted to try to come up with a way to make one of my own. So this is the design that I came up with, and this video series is going to cover exactly how I built every part of this oven. Uh, now this is going to be a very challenging uh, project to go through. Um, it is going to involve purchasing some commercial off-the-shelf parts. You'll be able to pick those up at a lot of your uh, local uh, big box stores or hardware stores. In addition to that, there are several uh, parts on here that we're going to fabricate ourselves with a 3D printer. And then there are some other uh, parts that are fabricated out of metal. So there is going to be uh, some metal work, some bending of metal, some cutting of metal. And uh, for example, this right here is the cooking tray. And uh, this isn't something that I bought. This is something that I actually made. And I'm going to show you how you can make Make this yourself too. Now uh, one of the other nice things that I included in this is I wanted to be able to store this away so, so that it was safe and secure and I don't have to worry about uh, breaking this glass tube when it's not in use. So I designed it in a way that everything can be folded up and when it's folded up uh, you can see this one is folded up and ready to go. Uh, when it's folded up, uh, you can simply lock it up in a uh, storage uh, or a, a tool storage box and then carry it to wherever you need. So um, that's the main features of this and uh, it is going to span over several different videos because it is a complicated build. But uh, this was something that uh, I'll be honest with you, before this, I had never worked with a 3D printer, but I was able to design parts on my own. I had never done any metal work, any bending or cutting of metal, uh, and I was able to work this out, and I'm going to show you the ways that I did this so that you too hopefully can have some confidence that this is a project you can handle on your own. Now, it's not going to be an easy project. Like I said, it is going to be a challenging project. Now you might be asking, why would I go through all the trouble of building a solar oven like this myself instead of just buying one if there's one available or several models of this type of oven already available on the internet? Well, if you've looked at any of those ovens, and I'm not going to mention any of, any of them by name because all of them are actually good ovens, and I don't really have anything bad to say about them other than the main thing is, is the cost. Uh, some of the uh, solar tube ovens like this that are online, uh, most of them go in the neighborhood of the very small ones go for two or three hundred dollars, where the large ones that are this size or even smaller may go for five, six, or seven hundred dollars. Now, I've looked at those and I would love to own one of those. I've every review that I've seen with those ovens. Uh, it has been totally positive and the people that do purchase them love them. Uh, but honestly, I can't justify spending $500 or more on a solar oven. I mean, you do have to consider it something that's very limited in when you can use it and how you can use it. Uh, you can't use them at night. Actually, one of them that's on the market does come with an uh, a electronic or an electric element that sits in the oven that does allow you to use it when there's no sun, but you have to plug it into a battery or electric power. So while that's a benefit for the oven, it adds to the cost of the oven. Uh, I'm not really interested in doing that, but uh, for $500, um, I don't think I spent $500 for the oven that I have in my house, which is available to me 24-7. I can use it no matter what the weather or the time of the day. 
Uh, however, a solar oven, you can only use it when the sun's out. So it has to be daytime and it has to be when the weather is very nice outside. Uh, so just to justify the expense of $500 or more, um, I just couldn't do that for the limited usage that I'm going to get out of this oven. Now, uh, at the same time, um, by building it myself, I'm going to have the satisfaction of knowing that I built it. I know every aspect of it. I know how it works. If I break it or something, I know how to fix it or where I can get more parts for it. Uh, so there's that satisfaction of building and craftsmanship and, and the ownership of it. And um, now, will this project be something for you? you? Only you can decide. There is a lot of time that goes into it, and you are going to save quite a bit of money by doing it yourself. Uh, however, there are going to be some costs associated with it. I'm going to be adding some parts that are, as I mentioned, commercial off-the-shelf parts. And uh, honestly, you're going to be able to build this oven for about half the cost of what one of the larger ones would cost you commercially. So if you don't mind putting a little bit of elbow grease into a project, uh, you'll, you'll be able to get many years out of the work and craftsmanship, the time that you spend uh, in this project. Now, um, who may benefit from this project? If you're a prepper, uh, this is a good oven that's going to fit right in with your prepping lifestyle. But you have to keep in mind, is it, it, this oven isn't going to be the end off for everything. Um, you are going to have to still have a backup way of cooking, either an electric stove or a gas stove or something you can burn wood because this oven isn't going to get you by in those winter months or nighttime or during the inclement weather where some of those other ovens you may have in your prepping arsenal may be a better choice for you. Um, however, if you're one of those people that would rather use something like this when the sun is shining uh, and take advantage of that uh, solar gain, um, then this is going to be for you. If you live in an area that's hot and you don't want to heat up your house during the summertime by firing up your oven, um, then this will be the perfect project for you. Uh, if you've got a project going on, you can throw your food in this, walk away, come back 30, 45 an hour later, depending on what you're cooking, and your food's going to be ready and didn't cost you any electricity and you've not heated up your house. Other people that may benefit with this, if you're an outdoorsman, if you do any type of camping, if you do any type of RVing, uh, this may be an excellent project for you because uh, the oven uh, packs up and you can put it away when it's not in use. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space and it's going to always be available and, and ready to go when you need it. Um, now, uh, other people that may benefit from it, if you're an apartment dweller, uh, especially those that people that live in a high-rise apartments, uh, most of those type of uh, living centers don't allow you to have any type of a barbecue grill on your deck or patio or lanai or whatever you have attached to your apartment. As long as you have southern exposure or southwestern exposure, then you can use this because there's no flame um, and everything's self-contained. So this uh, you would be able to use if you lived in a, a high-rise apartment where you may get a ticket or be banned from banished from the uh, uh, living facility for cooking out on your patio. Another uh, group of people that may benefit from this, if you live in one of those uh, high fire zone or burn zones, uh, we've had a lot of uh, wildfire fires taking place in California and the western part of the U.S. for the last several years. And so they don't allow you to have an open flame in places like that. Uh, this may be a, a way that you can get around cooking outside in areas like that. Uh, so those are some of the people that would definitely benefit from it. So we've discussed the pros and the cons, uh, but only you can decide if this is going to be a project for you. Um, this, uh, this video series is going to span uh, probably five or six different videos just for the uh, building process. I did try to go into detail. In some cases, I probably went into more detail than you'll need, but I wanted to make sure that I included everything that you needed 
uh, every bit of information so that you can produce one of these on your own. Um, there are, as I mentioned, a lot of parts you're going to need for this. You are going to need to fabricate your own parts, be it with a 3D printer or um, uh, bending metal, various things like that. Um, if you're not familiar with a 3D printer, don't fret. I wasn't either when I first got started. And uh, I made it as, as easy for everybody as possible in that I designed the 3D printable parts. And I'm going to make those parts that I designed available to you. So all you have to do is download those parts from a website called Thingiverse. Uh, and then print them out on your 3D printer. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, what you can do is just go look online, go to, uh, say, Facebook and look up, uh, type in, like here in Ohio, I would type up uh, or do a search for 3D printing Ohio or 3D printing Columbus, Ohio. And there are several groups of people that are in my local area that have 3D printers that um, uh, they usually will post their different projects and things that they've designed or they've printed out. So if you don't know any about, anything about 3D printer, printing or you don't have a 3D printer, reach out to one of those folks and see if they'll 3D print something for you, maybe at a small cost or maybe you can do a trade with them. Um, as far as the other things uh, like a bending metal and cutting metal, you're going to have to have some tools uh, to do that. So hopefully you already have in your garage what's needed. If not, I will provide... Uh, links to everything that I have purchased. Uh, some of the items you can pick up uh, very inexpensively at stores like a Harbor Freight or you can go to Amazon.com or, or Home Depot or Lowe's and pick those up. And I've tried to go with the lower price solutions wherever possible. Now one thing that I would like to point out for all of the videos in this series you are going to have to check down below the video. There is usually an area down below each video where you can see the description of the video. And on some viewing platforms, you may have to click a little down arrow icon to see the full description of the video. But when you look in that description down below the video, you're going to see all of the links uh, that I've provided. So I'll provide the links to where you can go to get the 3D printable parts or the different links for the uh, tools and the materials that I use throughout this video series. Now some of those links that I've posted, I'm going to be totally upfront and honest with you, they are affiliate links, meaning that if you click on say an Amazon link or an eBay link and you purchase the item via that link, I am going to get a small affiliate commission for the purchase that you made. In some cases, it may be a few cents. In some cases, it may be a few dollars. Now, when you do that, it's not going to add the price or add the uh, additional cost to the price that you're going to pay. All it does is give me a small affiliate commission to whoever uh, or from whoever's selling that item. Uh, for me recommending you to go to them to buy that item. You don't have to use any of the affiliate links that I've mentioned below. You're welcome to search and if you're able to find a cheaper price or a local area uh, place that you can pick up those items, by all means do whatever it takes to uh, come up with the uh, lowest cost solution to meet your needs. Uh, however, at the same time, those affiliate commissions do uh, help me to continue to produce high quality videos and hopefully you'll view this as a high quality video. Um, but it helps, it puts a little bit of po uh, pocket money uh, back to me so that the items that I uh, gathered to put this project together and passed on to you, I'm able to recoup and hopefully go and put it into the next project that I'm going to work on. Uh, so with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and close out this video. And then watch in the next few days, I'm going to produce the first in this series of videos on how you can make your own solar evacuated tube oven. And because I took all the time to put this together and uh, um, 
design my own 3D printable parts, and this is kind of my oven. Uh, I did put my name on it, and so I am referring to this as the Stockton Solar Oven. So if you pass this along, these videos along to your friends, or maybe you make a few of these ovens like I've done, uh, hopefully you'll pass it along and mention this is the Stockton Solar Oven, and you can learn more about it by going to YouTube and doing a search for it. So with that said, I'm gonna close this video out uh, for now, go ahead and tune in in a couple days. I'm going to post that first video on how to build this oven. And the way you can automatically be notified when each uh, consecutive video is uh, put online and is available for you to view, please click that subscribe button down below the description or within the description of this video. With, uh, if you're subscribed, you'll automatically be notified whenever I put a new video online and it's available for you to view. Now, you can also click, there should also be down there somewhere near that subscribe button, there's also a little bell icon. If you click that bell icon, you'll automatically be notified in either your email or as a pop-up on your iPad so that when that next video is online, you'll be able to be one of the first people to watch that. Uh, that new video that's out. So thank you very much for tuning into this video and I hope you'll stay with me throughout this entire se uh, series of videos on this solar tube oven. So thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and thanks for subscribing. I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care.